Robinson and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Well hello again modelers and welcome back to the workshop. As a bit of a busman's holiday to the the big 103 inch chipmunk I thought maybe I would take a bit of a break and build a small free flight model that won't be free flight in this case but a, a, a smaller indoor model for the upcoming uh, scale indoor RC competition. I usually enter every year and I've been lucky enough to win it one year uh, a couple of, couple of years ago uh, with a Piper Cub uh, GBBYB <laughs> which is a, a model of a cub my dad flew around well and, and I did flew around in in the UK with me and me in the back and him flying and um, so it had fond memories so that cub has been campaigned for a few years and has done quite well um, this year I'm probably going to campaign a SE5A in the Jack Savage skywriting silver livery uh, as my scale entry and uh, for my kit scale entry I'm going to build the Dumas flying model and it's a 30 inch version of the DH chipmunk and it's not one that's been around for very long um, and I certainly wasn't aware of it so we'll um, we'll put that together and we'll modify it for radio control. We'll, we'll fit a small single cell uh, brushless motor, a couple of servos, probably, well, it's definitely going to be rudder elevator. Whether I fit ailerons is still up for debate. The reason being that um, with the amount of dihedral that an indoor free flight model or a free flight model has, it doesn't tend to need uh, ailerons to turn and a little bit of rudder is, is, is all that's required. But it is quite nice sometimes to be able to put opposite rudder to aileron in um, to balance the turns a little bit. So um, the jury is still out on whether I fit ailerons. 30 inch span is, is nice and it's a, it's a good size for indoor um, and certainly a little larger than you would normally see for indoor RC models. So it will it'll carry the extra weight of the um, of the servo in the wing or two servos even but one one is all that's really needed um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll open the box and we'll have a look at what you get inside the Dumas kit so here it is Dumas 30 inch wingspan scale rubber powered model lovely big box but I think we're going to find <laughs> the contents are a lot smaller so let's see what we've got lots of goodies Oh, it looks like some of the wood has um, has come out of the sprues, and that's it. That's everything. So we've got a very nice back form canopy. Now it doesn't look very clear because it's got some protective film on it, which usually, uh, as you can see, peels away fairly easily, and you can see it's a nice clear moulding underneath. So that that that's good. Um, so that's the canopy. We've got the uh, the rubber motor, the elastic band, and the propeller. Um, the dowel there is for the uh, for hooking the rubber motor to the back of the fuselage, so we don't need that. We've got some wheels, which are just plastic um, vac forms. Uh, in fact, they're not vac forms; they are actually moulded parts, which um, the two halves of the wheel you glue together. Very good. We've got. <clears throat> Some sheets of tissue, tissue paper, in red and white, uh, as you saw on the block box art. The colour scheme that they suggest on the artwork is um, is for this this aircraft here, and they, these are self adhesive decals. They're not water slide, uh, which I would normally advocate, but I think uh, they've gone for these because these are a little bit easier to apply over a curved surface than uh, than decals. Well, I'd argue that. Um, these are a bit heavier than decals, so I'll think about that. I may convert these to decals and use those, or I may airbrush them. We'll see. Uh, a paper pattern for the top of the cockpit. Um, this interesting set of paper paperwork is basically the materials list. Um, 
a quick view of what's on the sprues on the on the sheets of balsa. Um, I'm just looking at them now and they aren't labelled. So if we look at this one, some of the bits have, have come out. It's beautifully laser cut, it's very, very nice. But this is 335C, um, which is this one here, 335C. And I can put it that way around so you can see. But as you, as you can tell, nothing is labelled. So it, it can get a little bit confusing if you don't know which one is, because all the ribs are a different size. So R4, R3, R2, R1. So this gives you a key as to where they are on, on, on the model. You probably all already know this. You know, you're, you're hardened modelers now. Some, some instructions on basically how to build it. Um, and there we go. So that's, that's the, that bit of paperwork. There was another bit of paperwork in the, uh, well, I'll show you that in a second. As far as the, the balsa parts go, it's in sheets. And it's, as I said, very nicely laser cut. The only thing I would say is that they cut right through in places. So several bits are actually loose. And these triangles and stuff can be really difficult to identify when they're, when they, when they're set free uh, and just lying in boxes. I mean, that's probably, no, it isn't that one you see. You think it is, but it isn't. It's that one. So, um, so probably one of the first things I'd do is I'd go through and Try and identify the parts, maybe label them. So that's the rest of the missing ribs. There's another piece of triangle. There's another rib. So look, what else have we got in here? More ribs. Get rid of those. These are the formers for the fuselage, mainly the cowl parts that you laminate together to make up the cowl. And we've got a little bit of piano wire. This would normally be used for the undercarriage, that sort of thing. Um, and then lots and lots of little strips of 1 16th square. Um, some of it's square, some of it's 16th by 8th, but lots of strip wood. Um, so, so there we go, and that's basically what we build the, the airframe from. As you can see, there's not a lot of material. You know, there's, there's barely one sheet of 16th. And there's probably only a sheet of 16th, well, not even that, whatever's left of that 16th to cut this up. So you're probably looking at three or four pounds worth of wood, but the kit is around 50 pounds. So if you're skillful enough to cut your own parts from a plan, you'll save, you'll save yourself a lot of money. And these models are really quite cheap to build because you, you might typically the Piper Cub that I built for competition um, only took one sheet of 16th and some little bits of carbon fiber rod and some bamboo skewers and stuff like that. So it's a very cheap way of modeling, of doing these scale modeling. And um, the competition, the Nats, is held at um, Walsall University. Well, it's actually Wolverhampton University, but the Walsall campus. And the indoor space is, is terrific. So you can, um, you know, you, you can fly your models in, in, a, in, a, in an arena that you would not normally be able to fly at because it, it, it costs a couple of thousand for the weekend to rent the rent the hall. So the, the the final thing I want to show you is the other bit that's missing from from what you've seen there, and I, that's because I already took them out. Here you'll see the two two plans, two, two pages of plans. So it's fairly straightforward build. In fact, it's a very simple build. So this is a profile and top view of the fuselage, showing some of the undercarriage and the bulkhead bits and pieces. All fairly straightforward. And then this one shows the construction of the wing. And I highly advise you before you start any model of this sort of thing is to study the plan completely, read the instructions and get an idea of how it's been designed and the proofs, you know, the, the, the steps you need to take. Uh, a method statement really on, to, uh, on how to build it. With this one, you build to, um, a, a crutch, uh, a, you know, a central corner, and then you build bulkheads on it. And then you build this side keel and you lay it on top and then you can flip it over and put the formers on the other side and another side keel and there you have the fuselage. Um, how you keep it straight is you build one side, put the bulkheads and formers on it, then you maybe even put the stringers on it. I haven't read the instructions, <laughs> breaking my own rule there. Then you put the stringers on it to make this a very rigid structure. Then you flip it over um, and you can build in your hands the other side 
uh, because it'll maintain its rigidity as long as you're careful and keep checking it. The things like the tailplane, uh, the tailplane and the fin and rudder, which we'll have to modify because we'll have to split the elevator out and the rudder out. Um, these are just made of strip wood joined together and you'll see, see how that's done. The wing is made in three parts. So there's a center section and two wing panels, which we then angle up and join in the middle. Pretty, pretty much the same as what you'd expect on a, on a much larger model that you've already seen. But this one, you know, is, is really, I'm just showing you this for those that really want to get into maybe building indoor models and cheaper models. And they're enjoying seeing the big ones, but really you need a lot of space for a big model and, and they are fairly expensive and they take a massive amount of time. Whereas as you'll see with this, this is, this is a fairly quick process. Um, for kit scale, I have to build it exactly to the plan. The only things that I'm allowed to modify because I'm flying in radio control kit scale, and this is a free flight model, i.e. you wind up the rubber band and you launch it and it climbs in circles. And as the rubber power decays, it comes down in circles and, and then lands. With this being RC, we can either, well, we could fit ailerons. We could split the rudder and split the elevator so that they function. And then at the front, we can fit a, a brushless motor or, or a motor of some sort. Uh, and then a very small radio control equipment. To give you an idea, the servos that we'll use in this are 1.6 grams each, which is not really a lot. Um, the battery pack is a single one cell 1S LiPo, which again is, is very few grams. So I would hope the whole, the whole model will come up. Well, it, it definitely needs to be under say 75 grams. I would hopefully be aiming for something between 50 and 60 grams for this. Um, so there we go. Hopefully you'll enjoy the series of videos and um, it'll give us a bit of a break away from the big one, uh, which we'll get back to shortly. All right. Well, hope you enjoy the video. One of the things I wanted to mention when we were doing the tools uh, session was my building board. Um, a few people have asked on Facebook and other forums and what have you, what do you use as a building board? Not, not specifically to me, but to, to modelers in general. So what I thought I'd do is show you what I use. So this is a, this, this board you're seeing, the big one, which is my big main building board, is 15 years old. Um, and what it is, is a piece of half inch ply, um, MDF, in fact, that's nice and straight, um, you know, nice and flat. And then onto the surface of it, I've glued this. And this is about, well, it's a quarter of an inch thick. And it's, um, you know, as you can see, you can compress it, it's foam. But it's quite a hard foam, it's, it's floor underlay. And it's used for laminated, well, I used it for a laminated floor, under, under, under floor. <laughs> for underneath my laminated floor. Um, and it's, it's perfect because it accepts pins really easily. And you put the pins in at an angle and they'll grip really well. Up and down they still grip but you know you need, they need uh, quite a few of them. But it's a lovely surface to use and it's you know it's, it's relatively flat. You should really glue it to a board which is what I've done with the with my main board it's glued to MDF. And then the table it's actually set on is also a nice level table so I know it's flat. Um, so that's perfect. So what I have is, is a small section here for building the smaller models. And I just lay that on top of the, um, the the other board. In fact, the big board, I would normally turn over so that the foam is protected against the table and build against the MDF backing as my table. And then I put this smaller board on top of that and then I'll build on this. Now, one of the things I see a lot of people uh, do, and, and I'll tell you why I don't like to see it, is they'll take the structure of the wing for example, or the side formers, and they'll build it all up. You know, um, as you as you do, you'll you'll see as we build it all up. And then what they do is they take weights, and they actually weigh down the structure. And um, I don't like that, and I'll tell you why. Because what happens when you put weight on something? It pushes down, and if you push down on this, you can see both ends of the wood have arisen. So if you put weights on this and it's not evenly distributed, then you'll actually make it worse because you'll actually put bends in the wood where you don't want it to be bent. So I like to use pins. 
Uh, and the way I use the pins, I'll just quickly show you, is slightly different. Because what you should never do, you should never put a pin through a spar or through a beam or a cross member, or, or you should never put it through the wood. So what you do is you put it in against the wood and off at an angle, and then against the wood and off at an angle to form a cross that is holding the wood down. So you've not penetrated the wood, you've not damaged it, you've not, you've not made a hole in the grain, which a lot of people do. Now, when you are actually pinning things together, say wingtips to the end rib, the rib is a much bigger surface and can take the, the, um, the weakening of the holes of the pin, so it's not such a big issue. But spars, long runs, things like that, that are structural stringers, try not to put a hole in them with the pins. Try and avoid it. Another way you can do it is if you take um, a scrap of wood and you can, you can put it against the part you want to pin down and then pin down the scrap. That's another way of, of, uh, of tackling this. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to um, put the plan over the building table and I might use the full size one because the plans are quite large. Uh, and then I'm going to put some plastic, clear plastic film, which is only the backing from iron on model covering. It's the clear film that you throw away normally. I'll pin that backing down over the plan and then I'll build on top of the plan. And the, the plastic film then protects it from most things. And it also, the main reason for using it is it stops you gluing the wood, <laughs> gluing the aeroplane to your bench, which is... Um, which is not a good thing. Okay, so we'll set everything up, and then um, and then we'll start with um, with a fuselage.
So there we go. That's the fuselage completed. I've clipped bits out of it. It's probably taken a couple of hours to get to this stage. The instructions are fairly straightforward. The only difficult bit was bending those wing seat uh, sheeting, uh, which isn't very clear on the instructions as to what you have to do, but, but it, it does bend quite, quite happily. I don't like introducing um, loads like that by twisting the wood, but it doesn't seem to distort the shape of the fuselage. So we've got some modifications to do to this. The whole front end is going to be removable and held by magnets. Uh, this will expose all the radio gear and the motor. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this first bit of the video. The next one we'll look at the wings or the tailplane, I don't know. Whichever takes my fancy at the time. Same as always, if you've enjoyed it, please click, click like and subscribe to the channel.